On December 19th, 2017, the Annals of Internal Medicine published a series of meta-analyses, reviews regarding cognitive decline, Alzheimer's type dementia, and how to prevent it. Basically, it covered several areas. This one covered physical activity uh, as a preventive. Others covered supplements and diet, um, like ginkgo, uh, phosphatidylserine, multivitamins. Another one covered um, medications, like blood pressure medications, uh, diabetic medications, Alzheimer's medications. Another one covered cognitive training. Um, <clears throat> And the outcome on all of these was interpreted as bad. Um, so <clears throat> I, originally I decided, I thought I would do like a, a single video to cover all of them. As I got deeper into it though, I felt like it was clearly worth the details. So bear with me. I'm going to start with the one on physical activity, physical activity interventions and uh, prevention of cognitive decline, Annals of Internal Medicine. December 19th, 2017. Overall, the science was good. I'll, I'll go over a few basics on it. Um, they had a lot of studies involved. Um, they looked only at, the, they went from uh, 2009 to 2017 using electronic databases and then other databases prior to that. They used good Cochrane analyses, 32 eligible trials, 16 with low to moderate risk of bias, and they had multiple ways of looking at bias. Again, similar to the Cochrane analyses. Um, most trials had six months follow-up. They wanted to look at, uh, at trials that had at least six months of follow-up. Again, now that you begin to start seeing some of the problems with these studies, six months of follow-up to look at an intervention for cognitive decline? Hmm. Okay, low strength evidence showed that multi-component physical activity had uh, no effect on cognitive function. Multi-domain intervention um, involving physical activity, diet, cognitive training improved several outcomes. So again, you're starting to see some chinks in the armor in terms of maybe uh, this evidence is not as bad as we had feared. Bottom line, evidence regarding effects on, uh, on dementia prevention was insufficient for all physical activity and interventions. So again, if you look at it <clears throat> from uh, 30,000 feet, maybe a little bit depressing. Again, as you start getting deeper, if, things begin to emerge. Uh, the, the first of all, let's think about the study. Let's go a little bit deeper and look at the study team. It was uh, Health Partners. It's a well-respected uh, group in, um, in Minnesota. Uh, they've, they've done things the right way for the most part compared to other uh, health care programs, and they've actually held costs in line. And they did that the right way, not by withholding care. Um, but by go doing good prevention. There, was, there were a lot of public health uh, researchers involved in the teams, many MD, MPH, PhD, MPH, and there were some uh, guys on the team that had done a lot of work with dementia. One thing I didn't see, though, uh, was a lot of uh, researchers in, that are very involved in uh, insulin resistance research. We can talk about that later. It's a good journal. You know, one way to tell the quality of the, of the research is to look at the quality of the journal. Annals of Internal Medicine is an excellent journal. It's not New England Journal, but again, it's good. And uh, New England Journal is more for science changing type of uh, quality. This, for the most part, was seen as just, um, we sort of already know this. In fact, one of the editorial comments was, finally, somebody had the guts to stand up and say, we can't prevent cognitive decline. Again, very negative uh, interpretation. Uh, to look at the, medic, uh, the analytical processes, they use the basic Cochrane processes for meta-analysis. 
And for those of you who are saying, what's a meta-analysis? It's where you take all, you find all of the research that's available. You look at those studies. You take out the ones that have bias, and they used a good method for doing that. Then you look to see if they had the appropriate measurements, the appropriate follow-up, they used the appropriate um, interventions, and they said what they said they were going to do. And again, they did excellent work on all of those areas. They looked at many parameters, aerobic, uh, resistance training. They didn't look at uh, high-intensity interval training. Uh, they did look at Tai Chi. Um, and they looked at multiple components, diet supplement uh, compared to uh, diet supplement and exercise compared to uh, attention management. And they did some other stuff. Let's look at the actual study itself. Again, getting deeper and deeper. Thanks for your uh, patience as, with me as we get into detail on this. But again, I think it's helpful for those of us who are concerned about what this study says. Many of us have been thinking, well, physical activity can help prevent cognitive decline. Just more information, really good study team. Um, I'll put the, uh, a link in the, uh, uh, in the write-up underneath the, the video. Uh, again, one of the concerns, only six months or longer. That's a problem with the studies that were available. I mean, how can you prevent dementia with follow-up of only six months or longer? One of the comments regarding the science here is they did a full write-up on all of their techniques, and that's provided in yet another uh, publication. <clears throat> Very detailed write-up. They looked at Medline, Embase, PsycInfo, Ovid, Several different uh, ways of looking for good data. They did hand searches prior to um, 2019 using citation search. Uh, included randomized clinical trials, physical activity interventions, any sample size, uh, and large prospective quasi-experimental cohort studies with n greater than 500. Uh, follow up at least six months. Major outcomes of interest were mild cognitive impairment. That's what MCI means. Um, <clears throat> they used broad measures to look at several categories of cognitive domains. Um, again, looked at bias in several different ways, ruled that out, published their results in multiple ways. Uh, <clears throat> looked at multi-component, as we said before, looked at multi-component physical training, looked at uh, aerobic activity, Tai Chi, uh, resistance training. One thing that was absent on there was high intensity interval training, uh, physical activity and diet, in other words, looking at more than one. Um, component. Here's the, the statistics. I'm not going to go through those. Um, <clears throat> it's interesting. Uh, a movie called uh, Darkest Hour came out at about the same time this, um, this came out. And it was an interesting uh, analogy. Um, obviously, it was about uh, Churchill, but it was also about Great Britain. Great Britain <clears throat> entered World War II uh, looking like they were going to lose. Um, in fact, they had to change. If you look outside of uh, Churchill, he was actually a reflection of the attitude and the thought processes of Great Britain as a country. First, they started thinking, what's the reality of the situation? And the reality of the situation was not good. They looked like they were going to lose. As the king, the king was a good um, part, uh, a good indicator of this story. He began to make uh, plans and seriously consider uh, going into exile. As he began to seriously consider going into exile, he said, you know what, I'd rather die fighting this. And so they changed, Great Britain changed their perspective from what's the reality, and the leader at that point was Neville Chamberlain, and Halifax 
to, you know what, we're going to die before we agree to that reality, that as a reality. That was where they picked a new leader, Winston Churchill, whose perspective was, we're going to die before we accept that. Well, guess what? You know, I thought I was going to have to adopt the same type of thought processes for dementia. You know, the information's bad. Uh, I'm going to have to just make a choice. I'm, I'm going to die trying. Well, after actually reading what was what's supposed to be one of the most doom and gloom predicting pieces of research, I've changed my mind. I, even the research doesn't indicate that. For example, they quote this. They talk about the finger study. The, uh, it's a study, Finnish, um, geriatric, uh, cognitive impairment and disability study. Uh, I'll review that at a later time, but they actually began to see significant improvements. Uh, some improvement with one physical uh, activity, better improvement with larger, with uh, addition of other physical activities. So here's another concern that I had when I looked overall at the, uh, at the research here. Well, what's missing? What could have been done better? Well, there's very little information regarding management, uh, detection and management of uh, subtle insulin resistance. And again, these are not in the meta-analysis itself. It's in the studies that they reviewed. You don't see studies where they're talking about insulin surveys, o uh, OGTT, let alone, or even fasting glucose, or even a HOMA, HOMA IR. I mean, they're just not looking. The research is not that effective yet in... Uh, looking at prevention of dementia. Now that's important because <clears throat> there's a lot of evidence coming out recently that a hundred percent of dementia has been associated with insulin resistance. If not in the body, what they call uh, central nervous system insulin resistance. In other words, and, and as a result of that evidence coming out, Many well-informed people are beginning to call dementia type 3 diabetes. Yet, when you look at the research that's reviewed by these, uh, these meta-analyses, little or no information regarding looking at insulin resistance. What else is wrong with the study? What else could have been done? Well, again, if you look at it, uh, there's no... Everything tends to be a focus right now on a single bullet. Exercise or... BMI or diet or supplements or medication, cognitive training, but not so much you have to do all of these. And the reality is, what if this is a systems-wide issue, a multi-system issue? In other words, multiple systems have to be broken for this to happen. There's really not much research out there looking at that. No matter how good your meta-analysis is, you can't make a good, good science when the, the studies are not there. And again, I hit that issue again. Very few studies looking at even six months or longer duration. Well, we're talking about years and decades to develop this. So if you start looking overall at the research that these meta-analyses are trying to review, there are problems with it. Failure to review status of insulin resistance. Focus on amyloid beta, tau bodies, other outcomes of, uh, or, or indications of uh, the physical components of uh, dementia, but not what's causing dementia. Um, <clears throat> focus on past science uh, and dementia instead of looking for insulin resistance. Uh, again, you don't see a lot of uh, experts in subtle insulin resistance looking at dementia right now, or haven't in the past. It's starting to happen. Uh, focus on a single silver bullet instead of a multi-system approach. Again, if you read like Dale Bredesen's book, he keeps talking about 36 holes in the roof, 39, 40, talking about getting up to 100 holes in the roof. What he's referring to is this is a multi-system problem. It's not a single system problem, therefore you're not going to fix it with a single system silver bullet. Now those of you who are uh, my age and maybe some country 
influence in your life, you may have heard this statement, you can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. So that was a great meta-analysis that, that we reviewed. The techniques, the science was excellent. However, a meta-analysis that in terms of science is only as good as the science and the studies that it's reviewing. And the past studies for dementia and dementia prevention are just terrible. They don't, they don't cover what we need them to cover. I'm not the first person to say that. Now it's interesting, even though, and I'm not the first person to say these things about the study. Go back, find the study, and look at the discussion itself. I'd like to quote some things out of this discussion for you, because they're saying the same thing I am. This systematic review found that evidence for the effectiveness of single component physical activity uh, is largely insufficient. The only exception is low strength evidence of no effect for multi uh, component physical activity. The intervention with, su uh, with sufficient evidence of benefit uh, comprised physical activity, diet, and cognitive training. So they're beginning to say, look, there are glimmers of hope here. When you look at diet, uh, physical activity, cognitive training, in other words, multiple systems. You remember I mentioned that a minute ago. They go on to say, we believe these findings provide a signal that physical activity offers cognitive benefit. The, con the studies conducted were not long enough or sufficiently powered to show the true long-term effect. Again, we said that just a few minutes ago. Six months, these the studies that have been done are too short. They go on to say, effective, to be effective, regular physical activity may need to begin earlier in life and be sustained as a lifestyle. Short-term interventions begun after decades of high-risk behavior are likely insufficient to reduce dementia incidence. Again, yep. Physical activity may slow cognitive decline through increased blood flow, decrease other risk factors like cardiovascular disease, obesity, or diabetes. Cognitive benefits demonstrated in the FINGER trial are intriguing. Again, the Finnish trial. Because the intervention included components addressing several risk factors, the multi-system approach, including components, uh, and because the intervention addressed several risk factors, um, the physical activity was, not, looking at physical activity alone was not possible. So again, one of the studies that they quoted did look at multiple uh, components because it didn't isolate physical activity, they really couldn't make much from it, although they said that's a good study and it did show effect. Given the complex relationship between identified and interrelated risk factors that protect against cognitive decline, interventions addressing many risk factors at once might offer the best approach to successful intervention, especially if initiated in older adults already at high risk. So, <clears throat> Again, it's saying it over and over and over again. We need more studies which approach this issue earlier, look at a multi-system component, look at an entire lifestyle, not just one activity. This has been a long video. Um, thank you for your attention if you made it this far.